What is going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and in today's video we're going to learn how you can create a save system using a built-in functionality of Unity called Player Preps. Now this has a lot of functionality um, and it can save three different types of data. You can save integers, floats or even strings. Now Player Preps is typically used for settings and stuff like that but you can also use it for a simple game as well. So I want to show you how you can implement player preps to save your data in your game so over on the left you can see we have a canvas with a bunch of different elements in now we have an increment button which is actually our click me button we have a counter which is this big zero on screen we have a load button a reset and a save button these three buttons down here so we can save reset and load our score and we also have a name input down here, which will allow us to enter our own name. So I can show you how you can save a string and an integer in this video. So let's go into our game and let's actually add the functionality. Now I'm going to be doing all the functionality inside of a game manager. So I'm just going to create here and we're going to name something game manager, manager up here. I'm going to create a new script, create an ad, and then I'm going to double click this to open it up inside official studio code and there you go so we need a few different references inside of our game manager we're going to need a few different things we're going to need a public integer and we're going to call this our counter uh, and we're going to set this to zero by default we're also going to need a public string and this is going to be equal to our name and we'll set this as a blank string for now also we're going to need reference to a namespace called unity engine.ui so we can actually access ui components so we're going to need a reference we're going to say serialize field and we're going to need a reference to our text and this is going to be our counter text we're also going to need our name text and we that should be good for now so let's go into our thing and let's create a public void called increment counter and we're going to just say counter plus plus now we also need to update our counter text and to do that we're going to use something called on gui and inside for on gui we're going to say counter text dot text is equal to counter dot to string so it actually displays because obviously our counter is a integer which needs converting to a string to display as text and then we can also say our name text dot text is equal to the name we have here obviously this is going to update every few ticks so we can actually see this all changing as we do click but let's see if we've got the functionality working so let's go back to our game wait for this to load and then let's add in our references so we need our counter text which is going to be this oh no that one there yep so counter text and then we're going to need our name text which is here now we're also going to go to our increment button here i'm going to scroll down to click and i'm going to add a click event i'm going to drag in my game manager back to increment game manager and i'm going to drop that in and we'll swap that to game manager and i'm going to select increment counter here so every single time we click this button it's going to call increment counter so let's test this out let's hit play as you can see this is still set zero but if we click you can see that updates to one now if we spam click this you'll see it will update just as click quick as we click so there you go we now have 40 different elements but if we stop our game and we hit play you can see it's back to zero and we need to save that but first let's do our name here so we have a name input and as i come in here let's just say i enter my name as das das uh, hit save you can see nothing happens so we need to do something about that let's actually go to our name input on value changed we need to actually do so so i'm going to go to my game manager um we're going to double click it again to open it up and inside of here we're going to create a new public void and we'll call this set name and basically we're going to pass it here so this is going to give us a new name and it's going to set our name let's go to our back here and inside of our name input we're going to click on value change we're going to hit add a new function we're going to sit game manager game manager and i'm going to select set name at the top here and this is going to actually take our string in for us so let's hit play let's enter our name say tyler 
pot and there you go our name is now at the top here and we can now click with our name issue is if we stop and start again it, it's it's still going to be blank if we hit load it's still going to be blank so we need to be able to save these values so let's go back to our vs code and let's actually start saving these values so we'll create two different functions we have a public void save now inside the save we're going to basically save some different things we're going to save our counter and our name and to do this we're going to say player prefs which is how we access the player preferences and we can do, do two different things and we can either get a value or set a value now for this instance for saving we need to set an integer so set int and we'll call this counter and we're going to set this also to counter just like that so we now have player prefs we set an int called counter and also pass through the counter value here which will then save it inside of our player prefs we could also then write player prefs dot set string to name and name now there's one other value we could do here and we could say player prefs dot set float we could pass through float name and pass through the float uh, variable um so you can see there we could actually save a float as well but we don't have any instance for that in this game i just want to demonstrate that you could also just change out the string int for a float as well now we've saved these two so that will actually save them to our data but now we need to actually load them so i'm going to create a public void called load and inside of here i'm just going to say counter is equal to player prefs dot get int counter so we pass through the same name here and the same with our name we're just going to say player prefs dot get string and we're going to pass through a name now we can actually have default values here and we could say no name and then when every time this loads it will say we have no name and we could also say our counter is equal to zero but for demonstration purposes i'm going to sell it to 100 just because i want to show you how it works so now we have these two files now we can call this on click of a button or we could do auto saves and stuff like that for now i'm going to show you how you do it on a click of a button so let's go back to our game let this all load and let's go to our save button script add drop in our game manager go to our game manager and select save just like that and that should now save it let's go to our load button let's drop in our gate oh, our game manager as well and let's also go to game manager and click load there you go so that should have both the two functionality set to these buttons so let's hit play and the first thing we'll do is we're just going to hit load and as you can see that's set our value to 15 and our name to no name now the reason it's set this value to 15 and not 100 is because i've actually already saved something before and i forgot to delete it of course so it's actually gone back to 15 but if we we're going to set up this reset button now to actually reset this but before we do let's just click this a few times let's set it to 26 and let's hit save and now if we then click some more and we hit load you can see it goes back to 26 because that's our new value if we stop our game we replay there we go you can see it's back to zero so we can actually do this so it loads as soon as we hit play but also we can load it from our button so let's quickly load it when we click play and let's also save some values also let's save our actual name tyler parts let's hit save now let's change this to something like keith keith's a good guy but let's reload our stuff and that's going to load back in our name there but we need to reset this because we currently have some values that obviously shouldn't be there so let's close this let's go back to our game manager script and we need a few more functions so for starters above the increment counter we're going to create a start method and we're just going to call load so as soon as our game starts it's now going to load our values so they are already set and then we need to create one more public void called reset and what we're going to do is we could set our count as equal to zero but we actually want to save them as zero so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say count is equal name is equal to zero and then what we're going to do is we're going to say player prefs and we can do two things here we can say delete key and we can pass through a name such as counter and that will delete it from our player prefs so next time we try to load it it will give us our default value which is 100 
you don't actually have to pass through this if it doesn't exist it will just pass back null or nothing or a default value but i'm just going to pass back 100 again just because i want to show you how this works and there you go we can delete a key called counter and then we can delete our string but if we want to delete everything we could say delete oh oh if you spell it right that is delete all and that will get rid of every single player pref we have set so you gotta be careful when using delete all but if you know you want to reset everything and have it reset right from the beginning you can just call delete all let's go back to our unity instance let's click on our reset button let's scroll down to our event listener on click and let's drag in our game manager again go to game manager and click reset so that should now reset our values so let's hit play and you should notice as soon as we play it actually loads everything in because we're now loading on start which is great so everything loads immediately we could also then increment this and reload to reset ourselves but if we also want to reset we can click reset and you can see everything is now cleared now if we hit load again you can see we get the default values which is no name and 100 which is great and if we go back and we refresh it should also just pass through no name 100 because they are the default values so if we just go back to our script quickly i want to show you that so you can see here this is where it's coming so let's set this back to zero because we actually don't want it to be anything we don't we don't want it to start for 100 that's not right um so let's go back and now if we hit play this should also stay as zero and there you go and that is now no name now if we click me let's click it up to something like 21 hit save and then let's also change the name to tyler pots here and let's hit save make sure it's saved let's stop our game and let's say we come back a day later we come back we're like okay i want to increment some more hey my stats have loaded let's carry on playing and there you go that is how you use saving features or player prefs inside of unity now it's super simple but there's a lot more you can do with it you could add a timer for every 60 seconds that will automatically save your game you could also save your game every single time you increment your counter so you never actually lose a value so you could just say save in here and that would save every time you created it although i probably don't recommend doing that i recommend doing it a different way i mean you can but that's up to you if you don't want to lose a single uh, number you've incremented then definitely save in here or you can add like a 60 second timer i'm not gonna show you how to do that but there's a lot of different ways you can save every so often um which is pretty nice so guys that is how you create a saving system inside of unity I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have do not forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button if you're new around here and also do not forget to leave a comment or any feedback you have in the description below guys we also have a discord server if you get stuck at all and you have any questions try not to leave those in the comments if you have any big piece of code you need to paste because i can't read those i don't like reading them on there come to discord join discord and submit your issues there and i can help you as best i can or one of the community members will also help out they're really friendly they're always there to help and they're absolutely awesome so guys feel free to join discord link is down below for now guys thank you for tuning into this video i will see you in the next one peace out